Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome to A Lovely John, where we talk about literature. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about literary analysis, and this is my first episode in this series um, where I introduce what literary analysis is, what literary criticism is, some different schools of thought. And so this one's going to be kind of like a basic overview about giving you some skills to read well, to read more closely, um, and preparing you to kind of like dive into the subject in more specific detail. So, um, this one is called Asking Good Questions. It's a little bit shorter than what I presume my later episodes will be, but I hope you enjoy it. So unless you were taught with like the Socratic method or something, you were likely educated according to one of two major pedagogical theories. Ped pedagogical theories are basically theories about the best way to educate people. The first one is direct instruction. And this would be where the teacher is presenting the content to you, walking you through how to do exercises that employ whatever the concept is that they've presented, um, and then giving you the opportunity to do it on your own as a student and reveal your understanding of the concept through exercises on homework and these exercises on tests. Um, and that's again called direct instruction more or less. The other end of the spectrum it might be called discovery or student-centered learning. Um, and this is where the teacher kind of arranges a scenario through which the students are supposed to be able to apprehend the concept um, for themselves through observation and experimentation. Um, and yeah, and that they kind of like discover, you know, hence discovery or student-centered, they, they discover the knowledge for themselves. If you're wondering, Yes, I am biased as to which of these theories I think is stronger. Um, one, I engage in direct instruction right here, right now, and through these videos. I'm directly communicating certain concepts about English literature to you um, from you know my mouth to your ears, uh, and I'm guiding your reading and your analysis of books in the different videos that I do. Two, one of the former jobs that I had was actually writing curriculum material according to a particular direct uh, instruction pedagogical theory. Um, so again, I've had a kind of a strong bias towards this, I guess, for a long time. And three, if you've ever taught or tutored someone in a sort of discovery style, there's a certain point where many students may become frustrated because you as the teacher kind of like dancing around what the concept is is you kind of like wait for them to guess it um, and so there's a way in which it almost feels like a gotcha unless you're doing it really really well but i see a downside with exclusively using a direct method for education students can become lazy or at least accustomed to having all of the content directly provided to them and um, for elementary students, this is what they need. They are in primary school, it's primary school for reasons. First time they're being introduced to the foundations of every subject that they're gonna use for the rest of their lives. So they literally have nothing to sort of make hypotheses or with, right? They don't have any of that foundational information. So in primary school, it's absolutely necessary. But as students mature, gain more knowledge, get older and move into higher levels of education, um, they need to also be guided as to how to be independent learners so that when they cease attending formal classes, that doesn't also mean the end of their education, that they're able to educate themselves to a certain extent. And that's why teaching students how to ask good questions is really important. Uh, in my opinion, the best education that you're going to receive outside of a formal schooling situation or even some of these online courses that you can take, which are phenomenal, um, still it's going to be books outside of that type of a situation. And learning how to read for knowledge, not merely for entertainment, is really, really important. And that's where asking the right questions comes in, because you'll be turning to the book itself, asking it a question, and learning how to turn back to that same text for the answer. So, let's talk about the kinds of questions that you can ask of literature, and that way you can understand it better without having to have someone lecture about the book itself or um, look up, up alternative resources to find out what it means, but you, you yourself can discover what it means by directly reading the book. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity to start coming up with your own interpretations about what the book means. 
There are about a million questions you can ask of a book in about a hundred different ways that those questions can be phrased. But to break it down into simple terms, uh, I've kind of put them into three categories. What questions, how questions, and why questions. What questions are asked at the level of reading comprehension that basically assess how well you understood uh, what's happening in the book. So examples include what questions are usually summaries of the plot, i.e. what happened in the book, or summarize the plot, or <laughs> what happened, <laughs> right? Um, what questions can also include identification of characters and their characteristics. So for example, who is the protagonist? Uh, and what is she like or he like? Who is the antagonist's uncle? Um, and understanding the relationship between the characters. Um, what questions include identification of setting, and setting includes time and place, so what and when and where is the book taking place. So answering what questions will basically give you a book report. If you are able to thoroughly answer all of them, understand the characters, understand the plot, understand the setting, um, and give a summary of what happened in the book, you have written yourself a book report. This is probably going to be about a sixth grade level um, comprehension of a text. If you can't answer what questions, it's much more difficult to answer any of the deeper questions, how and why, then go into deeper levels of the book and the text. Um, and these what questions really are going to be the foundation of everything else that we do from here on out. How questions. So how questions begin to delve into the manner in which the content is of the book is presented to you. Um, so some how questions include um, identifying form and genre, and this is kind of acting on a macro scale. So understanding, okay, this is prose, not poetry. The author chose that for a reason. You know, um, this is going to be literary fiction. This is a mystery. They chose that genre for a reason. The author chose a frame narrative that chose that for a reason. And you can look at the ways in which all of these different things that um, account for the what type of questions we're now asking how we found out the what's, if that makes any sense. Um, identifying rhetorical strategies such as metaphors, similes, that sort of thing, or if you took an AP language class you learned all of the like, really weird obscure ones like synecdoche and metonymy and all of that. Those are kind of at the micro level of the how. So looking at particular sentences and paragraphs and seeing how the author chose to write certain things. And then asking questions about how you know what you know. So for example, if you know that a particular character is patient, how do you know that? How did the author present that information to you? Rarely are they going to just say Sally is patient unless you're reading like a, you know, a child's, a children's book. But, but a lot of times it's going to be presented in a more sophisticated fashion. You're going to see it through the actions and choices of the character. And from that you can determine, oh, patience is one of their characteristics. Um, so what episodes did the author choose to include in order to get that information across to you? And how questions begin to give you the tools to write and think about uh, literary analysis. It's sort of the transition from reading comprehension at the what level to literary analysis, which really exists at the why level. So let's talk about why questions. Why questions are always going to be the hardest to answer. They're the deepest. Um, <laughs> At the end of the day, we really don't know why the author chose to do what they chose to do, but we can make some guesses. Um, and why questions include asking why about basically everything that we've encountered so far, whether that be at the what level or at the how level. So for example, a how question might be, what type of point of view did the author use? Let's say they use third person close, then we could ask a why question about that. Why did they use third person close? Why did the author make Sally patient? That's existing at the what level? We identified the character and her characteristic and we're looking at now why did the author choose to make the character that way? Um, why did the author kill the protagonist's parents? That would exist at the what level too? Identifying a plot point and then asking why about that plot point. Um, why did the author use a metaphor there? So again, talking about how the literary um, techniques that the author might use and analyzing, well, why are they using these particular methods to deliver the content to us? And the answers to these questions now give you th the foundation for writing what would be an analytical essay. 
A common hang-up for English students as they move into the high school and collegiate levels is basically a failure to answer these questions. Um, and it's because, like I said, they're very, very hard to answer. A lot of times they're a guess, a shot in the dark. Um, and I don't know the answer to a lot of the questions that I ask myself about a text. It's common for students to continue turning in papers that are really just much more sophisticated book reports, but they really don't make that transition into analysis of literature. Um, and it's because they fail to answer this why question. So even if you're writing a paper about an author's use of metonymy, for example, and it's complex and you've broken it down and you've pulled out all of these examples, guess what? You're still this, uh, in terms of reasoning skill, you're just identifying. You're saying there's metonymy, there's metonymy, and there it is again. Here are my three examples, conclusion. But that's just a book report about the author's use of metonymy in a book. It's no different than, say, uh, the author's use of certain characterizations in a book. It's still a book report. Um, and it doesn't really become literary analysis until you propose a hypothesis as to why the author uses metonymy throughout the text because, and there's your conclusion, and there's your little missing piece that's going to take your, your essay from like B, C level book report all the way up to an A. All right, so that is actually my first episode. Just those three questions, I wanted to go over them and how they interact with each other and how you as a reader can use them to deepen your understanding of a text. Um, and this is just the beginning of more episodes to come on this topic. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you need more clarification on any of these topics that I covered or like the difference between how, what, and why questions and why do I separate them out the way that I do, leave those questions in the comments down below. I would love to clarify them uh, even more. And um, until next time, Ali I'm Alexandra and I'm still a bibliophile. <laughs>